to SP or not to SP is the question. Should you spend £15,800 on the SP version of the Hypermotard, which is more expensive than the base Street Fighter V2? Or should you go for the standard bike at £11,500? Is, is the SP bike worth the extra £3,600? Or is the standard one basically just as good for a lot less money? These are the questions we want the answers to. Well, I do anyway. So join me for a little razz around the countryside and I'll let you know if, the, if I think the SP is worth the extra money over the standard bike. Simple as that. Chopsy, roll the intro. Today, Ducati UK are having an open day, a media day, where they've got the, all of their fleet available for people to ride, and they've got a load of uh, influencers, journalists in to, uh, to come and ride them, basically. So I thought, I'm a massive, massive Hypermotard fan, so, uh, and a Supermoto fan, as you know. I mean, I own an SMCR, and I love the Hyper. I've got my own 1100S, which is in the process of being rebuilt. As regular viewers will know, yes, it is coming back. Don't worry, you will see that bike again at some point. So there's only a few differences between the Hyper Motard models. The SP has got the owner suspension, Marchesini wheels, and some and carbon belt covers and and the front mud guard. No, that's it. Three thousand six hundred pound. Bang. <laughs> Direction changes on this are so fast. You know, I wonder whether. The standard version is going to be a bit slower. It's, how much difference are those Marchesini wheels going to make? The 30 oh, on the brakes. Oh, the front end is so taut. Brakes are beautiful. Hey, it's my You know, just riding along, 30 miles an hour. I mean, look how it's so nimble. It's so agile. You're basically sat over the front wheel. So you just got, you know, you, it's just. I mean, you, look at this. It's unbelievable how quick this thing changes direction. You know, it's, it's pin, pin sharp accurate as well. You know, with the leverage you've got on the bars, oh, you can point that front wheel wherever you want it to go. And you'll make every apex on this. It's an absolute predator. Corner, couple of gears down, bang it in. So rewarding to ride I think the thing with this it's all about rider engagement you know you, you're just so engaged with the bike you know the seat is relatively thin so you can feel you know everything through the suspension with the Olins it feels quite a stiff ride quite a firm ride you know I can feel every bit of texture of this road oh this is good you know this is very very good It's a quick machine. I mean, 114 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot. And I guess the biggest thing with this bike, which I think does put people off these, if you look at the spec sheets, you know, it's 114 horsepower and fully fueled, it's, a two, it's 200 kilos. So, you know, it's not a particularly light motorcycle. Power to weight, you know, it's not topping the spec sheets in the power to weight categories but I, I don't think there's ever been a bike which defies you know its specs on paper it handles so beautifully it feels so light I think it must be where the weight is on the bike and the fact you're just literally sat over the front wheel you know it does not feel like a 200 kilo motorcycle at any stretch of the imagination even in sport there's loads of uh, you know manners are perfect through town I mean, it's a big V-twin, so, you know, below sort of 3,000 revs, and if you've got it sort of around 2,000 revs, 
there's a few vibes and it initially on the throttle it's a tiny little bit abrupt you know when you're very very low down the rev range but there's really you know this engine's been so refined over the years come on 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 loves a bit of that it's all about the twisties this bike it's not about the straight line it's about hammering round a corner <laughs> flat out on the boil oh, it's so lovely so responsive Twisties. That would be incredible on track. That's time the matter, you just go on the brakes and it'll do it. It won't miss an apex this bike. There are not many other bikes which handle. Like a hope of Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's amazing. God, it just goes for a set of twisties. It changes direction so well. But then you have got, you know, it's not like my SMCR. It's great, you know, it's fantastic fun and everything, but it's just a little bit more practical with hypermotor. It's just a little bit better for the days where say you want to go on a bit of a tour, you want to do more miles on it, it's a bit more comfortable. It's got better legs for sort of cruising, you know, motorway work. But it still excels at this tight twisty stuff like this. And there's not many bikes which will keep with this and ride like this on a set of bumpy gnarly twisties. <laughs> what an absolute hooligan! And I'm talking about the bike, not me this time. I think we may have to do a SMCR versus Hyper comparison video. What a thing. I love how immediate everything is with it. You know, if you need to correct your line, it's just instantaneous. You know, a little bit of lever pressure, you're changing direction. You touch the brakes, the bite's there, you're stopping. This would be great on track, this would be great at Brands Hatch or Cadwell Park. This would rule the roost there. Honestly, this is, uh, you know, it's just got a little bit more legs than my SMCR, just to make it a little bit more practical. <laughs> I love it, absolutely love it. I think you could have this as your only motorcycle. You could, you could commute on this, you could do trips on this. This brings you all the fun, the excitement, the adrenaline of a supermoto but slightly more practical oh, that sounds like the best motorcycle i've ever heard so i've ridden the sp this is the rve version which is basically the standard version with the marzocchi forks sack shock you know the non marchesini wheels but with the fancy paint on it this is about a thousand pound extra than the base hyper so same spec as the base hyper but with fancy paint basically so i'm really really interested to see how this compares to the sp version can you even notice any difference while you're riding it jumping aboard i do fancy it is a tiny bit lower than the sp version i can completely flat foot this i couldn't on the sp so let's power her up obviously sounds the same same engine all of that business right we've got the wheelie control on at the moment we obviously we do not want that go to wheelie control off oh yeah so you only got to do this once and it will remember i think what while we're here we turn the traction control back so i think less traction also helps with the wheelies yeah actually it does feel a little bit slower to change direction i'm gonna feel heavy 
but it does feel a little bit more I mean it's still an incredibly fast turning motorcycle but it's a little feels a little bit lazier than the SP whether that's due to the suspension being a little bit a little bit shorter or whether that's the wheels whether that's those Marchesini wheels you're noticing the weight there but yeah perhaps a little bit slower to change direction oh these things just lay down beautifully oh flops back the other way beautifully these hyper motards I can tell you straight away this is 95 as percent as much fun as the SP version holds the road beautifully stable I fancy the suspension suspension is short travel it's also maybe a little bit plusher for the road less jarring the SP Olins is definitely sti stiffer sprung I think um, obviously if you want to take it on track and stuff like that I think yeah maybe that that SP with the firm suspension of course this is fully adjustable so a bit of twiddling it may be the same but out the crate it definitely feels a little bit softer which could be a good thing it could actually be a good thing could make it a nicer road bike actually the RVE I think is 11 and a half or might be 12 and a half thousand which is you know bikes these days are a fortune Ducatis are expensive but 12 and a half grand for you know a really fun Ducati doesn't sound too bad but when you're talking 15 8 for the SP version I know it's got the spec but you know what I actually I'd be completely happy with this completely happy with this I don't think there's any need to spend that extra money unless you want to go on track and uh, you know use it a bit harder you know if, you, if you're going to be riding at 100% I think you're going to notice the SP slightly more confidence inspiring around the corners maybe because of that stiffer suspension I mean that gold stuff is good and the direction changes are definitely faster on the SP compared to this the brakes are equally as good as on this <laughs> bit of rear brake bit of front brake balance it out nicely crest it crest it oh third gear it's that is a real bumpy section of road and these bikes or this one in particular it's, it's just irons out those bumps in the road it's definitely a plusher ride on the standard bike definitely a plusher ride squeezing through it's lovely in traffic this as well it's so easy so you know up over the front it's such an easy bike to ride at low speed and the throttle response from this engine at low speed even in first gear in sport mode a little bit chunk clunky on the quick shift i guess if you if you're going to be really aggressive with it Right, here we go, up to the front, as you do on a motorcycle. The standard one is definitely an option. Don't rule it out and think you've just got to get the SP. Yeah, the SP's got the bling on, but this is 95% as much of the same motorcycle as the SP. This road is atrocious, you know, this is typical UK back roads, really bumpy, potholey. Suspension on this laps it up actually. Probably better suited than the SP for these types of roads, to be perfectly honest. This oh. These are the roads the hyper's made for. Whoa! <laughs> Look at this! Fantastic! This is what it's all about for one of these bikes. And as I say, I do think the suspension on this is perhaps a little bit more suited for this type of surface. Oh, it's such an agile, amazing, fun machine this. It's, it's miles per mile on one of these. I think absolutely my favourite 
favourite Ducati. <laughs> Bit lively at the back there. This is what this bike was made for. So I've had a good raz round on both the bikes and the conclusion is really <laughs> the SP is better. The SP is better. It's slightly more, slightly firmer, the suspension with the Olins. Um, it's a little bit more, I'd say comfortable, the standard version. Um, the brakes also feel better because it's got a stiffer front end. So I think the SP is the better bike but is it worth an additional 30%? An additional 3,600 pounds is the question, where the standard bike is also very, very good. I'd say the SP is probably 10% better than the standard bike, but it's 30% more expensive. So it depends how much you want the gold bling and the, and the lightweight wheels. They do make a difference on the road, but the standard bike for 11 and a half grand is still absolutely fantastic. So if you can afford it, get the SP. If you want the Hypermotor but can't stretch to the 15,800 price tag the SP's got, then the standard machine is still a very, very good bike and only slightly less intense than the SP version. If you want to go on track, I think the suspension, the, the stiffness, the rigidity will be noticed on track. But just as a road bike, the standard one actually, where the suspension's a bit more plush, actually soaks up those bumps a bit better. So it's a tough one. For 11 and a half grand, do not rule this out thinking you've got to get the SP version. The standard one is a very, very good bike. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed that and I will see you on the next video. Cheers, guys.